am I good? Roof on me. Ah, my G. <laughs> What's going on, my Ah, cousin? man, I'm well yourself. Very good. <laughs> good stuff. Amazing pants. Thank you very much. I love. They made by a company called Good Good Good. Okay, okay, cool. Impressive. And the impressive. pants are good, good, good. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> so I mean, uh, obviously, you styling. You've got that on lock. Um, you're a creative of note, and you've been in the game for the most amazing time. Like, what else is left for for Luiso Gola at this point in time? I I've got a lot to do. I think I got um. I just gotta continue becoming a better stand up. Yes. And, and just becoming. I think that's the thing that I'm mainly interested in: becoming a better stand up and being able to com uh, to convert sometimes complicated ideas into funny. Yes. That's the thing that I'm more interested in. Did you find um, 2020 uh, with obviously this ominous vibe going on, where do you pull that humor from? No, uh, you just take a break. Yes. You take a break. You don't, um, you don't try to squeeze water from a rock, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? You wait for everything to die out and then kind of get back into it. I haven't really been... Yeah. I've, I've, you know, I've thought of things, but I haven't really had the urge to like, oh, I need to get, you know, I, I'm just like, yo, let's just survive this thing first. You know, one of my actual first questions I was thinking about, because uh, obviously the, the climate is very uncertain and um, it also comes with the whole thing of like cancel culture. Um, is that why maybe the title Unlearning uh, came into place? Are there certain things that you had to unlearn as you're growing in the space and the game and uh, so forth? No, nah, listen, I... I started writing the show six years ago. Mm. I started doing, I did it in Grahamstown. I did it, I, I, it's been literally, yeah, five, five, five years, five six, five, six years that yeah. I, 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 this show has existed. Um, and the themes have been the same. What was the holdup? Uh, well, hold up to? In terms of like why six years and why is it only dropping now? Is it because the timing is perfect? Um, I mean, I could have released it anywhere else. I could have just put it out on the internet. But I, I, I always believed that this show was good enough to exist in a platform like Netflix. Mm -hmm. So I wrote another show that, yeah. I, that I had been touring when this, uh, when this, when this call for this thing yes. happened. But um, it wasn't like a delay per se. It was mm. just like um, I don't understand. Like I, I don't. It was. I just shelved it. Ah. Yeah, it was shelved. But it, I mean, I wasn't really. Dealing with cancel culture. In the new show that I'm doing, yeah. I, was, I really talk about cancel culture. But this one, I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't like, I, it, cancel culture wasn't even a real thing five years, six years ago. I mean, <laughs> definitely. I mean, that's why for me, it's, it's, it's so crazy to see um, comics as yourself so still prevalent in this time. And I think that's one of the, the one art form that is still, you know, not tainted. Um, but you travel around the world and so many things. Do you still get the same reception that you did get back uh, years back in comparison to now? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm getting better. You have I think to. as a stand-up, I'm yeah. getting better. Um, I, I just, you know, sometimes I, I used to get nervous when I went. You. Um, I still get nervous. I mean, I, I, I definitely get nervous. I just, it's, it's just how you get in touch with your nerves. And mm. yeah, all these things happen to you, like fear, nerves, jealousy, envy. It's not, these are not bad things per mm. se. They just, it's just your body being communicated, mm. things, whatever it is. Like fear, you know, you, your body's telling you you are in danger. There's something that's being yes. communicated to you. You just have to tap into that and find out what it is. Mm. It's just that if it's lingering, that means you're not dealing with it. You I, see like, what I'm the, saying? I, I but, like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's okay to be jealous. It's okay to be envious. It's just if you now if you've been envious of this person for two years or three years or four yes. months, then you're not dealing with it. You're, you're not, not dealing with it. You're not. You're not. You're not communicating with your body, as in you're not understanding what your body is telling you. I like that, I like that. So um, that means there's obviously uh, future aspirations. Um, I know one of my first questions was like, what's next? But what are the few things that you've sort of kind of been fearful to maybe jump on because maybe people might say, hey, but Luis, you're a comic and you should probably stick to your guns. Is there anything else outside of, you know, comedy that you have aspirations and put it together? I mean, with the, with the, with the show many years ago, um, that was a first for me. I was like, yes, finally. Le uh, the, the satirical show. Yes, satirical, yes, yes. 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 Um, 
Yeah, the satirical show is a lot of work, man. Mm, mm, mm. And um, I'm a lazy person. <laughs> I like to do, listen, yeah. I really apply myself to stand up, but for the most part, man, uh, I don't want to, you know, yeah. I don't want to sit in a writer's room trying to come up with ideas. Ah. I really just want to do stand up mm. and occasionally do something else. I think that's what I am. It's like what happens a lot in, in stand up comedy, you get roped into a lot of things mm -hmm. and those things sometimes are distracting. I do find them distracting sometimes. So I just try to become a better stand-up every time. So I don't try to venture out too much. I have to, as soon as I venture far out too much, I, I have to pull myself back. Because I did that show for six years. Yes, yes. And then it was like, yeah, I need to go back to this thing and focus on it more. I mean, that comes with obviously things like uh, Emmy nominations and so forth. Do you ever feel like um, those accolades define you or you just doing your journey um, according to your destination and so forth and whatever comes, comes in? Yes and no. Like, yes, listen, I'm, mm. I'm not going to front like I don't want to win an Emmy or I mean, it's Oscar nice there. Yeah, yeah, it's a great thing <laughs> yeah. to do. But um, I, I don't focus on it. Mm. I, try, I try to do my stuff and then, you know, let the people who are in charge of awards do their, do, do their gig. Mm. But for me, like the way I deal with things is I... I understand that the big reward is that I get to do this. Like, I get to just do stand-up comedy. Yes. That's the reward. Ah. Uh -huh. Do you know what I mean? Like, everything else is a bonus. Like, but I do understand that even if I didn't have a Netflix special, even if I didn't get nominated, even mm. if I did, didn't do all these things, I think I'd be happy just doing stand-up. I mean, for, for me, like, it's, 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 one, it's an honor to, to actually, like, you know, Met you a couple of times, probably in the street somewhere. <laughs> but uh, uh, to have a conversation because I remember um, um, one of the early days, and I was like still like in high school, and you were like presenting so many uh, comics, uh, causes, the, the Trevors, and I was like, this man is, is definitely next uh, in terms of like you know comedy in Africa, and definitely you did do that. But as someone who's in the front line of you know African comics and so forth, what do you think is missing, and where would you like to see? Um, comedy in Africa the next five years? Um, man, I think, I think um, we do have a very interesting perspective generally. Mm. I mean, for me, personally, when I watch, I don't know if you watched uh, Celeste, Celeste Ndul. Yes, 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 I did yeah, see Yeah, she's Celeste. an actress, but she's a fantastic stand-up comedian. Mm. So when I watch her and listen to her and when we share ideas, her, her ideas are... Um, uh, unmatched in the world. Mm. It's, it's, you know, I think like in the next two, three years, she's going to be like a big stand-up act because I don't think what she says is something that anyone in the world is saying. So I think we'll, as, as, as uh, also when people really talk about Africans, mm. they talk about, uh, as Africans as well, one thing. Whereas even in South Africa alone, there's like 11 languages. Yes. Do you see what I'm saying? So even in this small little corner of Africa, we are sitting with 11 languages yes. and every language has its own subculture and yes. whatever the case may be. Um, I think there's certain groups of people who in their small cultures are just vocal people. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And some cultures are reserved mm. and they might not be in tune and standard. But because we're all black, we're going to be all labeled as Africans. But there's, we just, Different. Like, you know how different I am yes. from a Jamaican? <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. Like, yeah. you, know, you know what I mean? Like, like, my Zimbabwean friends are the most, some of the most conservative people. Mm, mm. Do you, know, do you, know, do you yeah. understand what I'm saying? And I'm like, we can grow up, but it's like we're the same age, but we think totally so, differently. So I, I, think, I think to answer your question, mm. is, I think that in the next five years, there's going to be a lot more African acts mm, mm, mm. being in the world. I mean, the tension is here with Netflix also coming yeah. and, and breaking so many gaps. I mean, obviously, uh, the first African act uh, in this particular domain. Big shout out to you. Thank Once. you. So um, I'm, I'm happy. I think we're all happy. Um, I got to watch and always a great gag to, to see you do what you do. And I love seeing the evolution, which is also amazing, which Thank is very much amazing. Um, maybe one of my last four questions, if we can squeeze something in. Have you always had an issue being able to communicate your identity, like from your cultural back to, uh, background, uh, coming from Google Air too, et cetera? Um, I think like, 
I've always tried to be honest with myself, mm. you know. I think when I first started, I kind of had an idea what would make people laugh, mm. you know, which is a very human thing. You kind of get, you know, I, I know what it takes to be a, a good footballer. Yes. This is what I got to do. I know what it takes to be a good this and good that. But then as you get older, you go, how do I take myself and, play, and, 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 and how do I express myself mm. um, and make what I think is cool, cool? Yes. Right? Like these pants? Yeah, these pants. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I'm I, trying to get connected there. I won't lie. Like. The pants? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm telling you, these pants are fire, man. Oh, yeah. But, um, um, yeah, so it's, it's, about who you, it's about who you are. Mm. You know, it's, it's about who you are. And, I, and, and I, it's such a hard journey. It's a hard journey. That's mm. why it's sometimes such a crazy thing, like, when someone is, like, 21 and, mm. you know, and, and I'm like, dude, you don't even really know yourself. Yes. Yet. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, like, for me, like, I'm th I think of myself as a stand-up at 21. I was like, I had so much to learn. Mm. I had so much to, just not even with the art, with life. Yes, with life. You know what I mean? It's like I listen to rap and the guy's 21 and he's talking about it. And you're like, bro, you're 21, chill. Life is still going to show you. Yeah. <laughs> and I think the culture at the time also sort of kind of dictates, you know, what the content is, you know, like I said earlier on with the whole cancel culture, uh, you guys were getting away with a lot of stuff. Like, you know, uh, anything that you said back then was regarded funny and then culture sort of kind of evolved and then it sort of kind of now puts you in this weird position where your old content might get you even, you know, right. knocked out of your current seat and so forth. So I can imagine, that's why when I was like looking at unlearning, I'm like, it's, 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 it's a fitting topic for right now and obviously you you translating it through your own personal growth and I feel like that's something that we should all you know yeah, take yeah. from that yeah no I, I listen I'm not feeling the pinch of st I think like every once in a while everything goes through a renegotiation mm. and I think with stand up that's happening right now mm. people are like listen man you have to be accountable for your words you can't just be like oh that's funny therefore it exists mm. some of the things are hurtful and, and, and also, it's, it's not an unreasonable request. Mm. It's not like these, you know what I mean? Uh, I understand the frustration on both ends. I'm a comic, so I'm probably going to be biased towards the other end. But yeah. what, what I do understand is that when it's uncomfortable, mm. growth is coming. For sure, for sure. Do you understand yeah. what I'm saying? So it's uncomfortable. At some point, the, the negotiation was going to come to a, a stand. Like, we're going to come to a place where we both agree. Mm. But right now, we're negotiating. And any negotiation... Is uncomfortable for because sure. we're going, we're, we're headed somewhere. Yes, yes, yes. And so for me, the way I see it is like, if you were a stand-up, you're talking to power, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you're talking to authority, you're talking to, you know. But then the tricky thing about stand-up is like, if, if you like um, an ex extremely successful movie star, mm. comedian, you become uh, part of the 1%. Yes. Now, as you being part of the 1%, should you be allowed to say whatever you want to say? Because now you're part Excellent, of the 1%. Sure, yeah. And so stand-up on its nature punches a path. Mm. And also stand-up comedians are some of the most influential people I, in the world. Honestly speaking, I feel like you guys are, are the poets of our times because if you look back, you can tell where we are in life. You know, like yeah. this is what's going on. This is yeah, the content yeah. that we've spoken about, which I've always like gravitated towards. But, but I think my final question is, besides being an international funny man, what's your, uh, you know, personal outlet? You know, how do you, because you made us laugh uh, in times of like uncertainty. Uh, you know, whenever we're going through something, Quick gag, yeah. you know, something to lighten up the mood. Yeah. But what, what is that for you? Football. Football. Yeah. I, I obsess a little bit over football. Like, um, like uh, one of those guys? I like, get in. Okay. <laughs> oh, I get in. <laughs> <laughs> Team, international, local? Um, local Pirates, international, Arsenal. <sighs> Say nothing. <laughs> Say nothing. We'll be fine. I mean, you're doing well for yourself. So you'll be fine. <laughs> he's like, uh, he's like, ah, oh, someone come hug this man. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, any any final words from your side of things? From my end, um, go watch the special. I guess. Yeah. That's my final words. Enjoy it, consume it however way, and have fun with it. Definitely, that's what we're all gonna do. We yeah. gotta do. Yeah. And yeah, Netflix is the future. Thank you so much. I uh, really appreciate this time. It's an honor from my from my side, and I'm definitely gonna 
watch and learn a few things and keep in touch with your journey. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. I appreciate your time, too. Bless up. Bless. <laughs>